vas-y. Moi, je fais ma vidéo. Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining. We are going to start in a few minutes, just waiting for everyone to sign in up. Um, we're very happy to have you all here. We're joining, we are both in London and Paris today. And feel free to Put, tell us where you're joining us from in the chat. It's always interesting for us to know. So this session will be recorded. I'm just going to give some of the information of um, what is going to happen today. Um, we are going to present you the um, creative documentary and photojournalism course that we're doing um, with Magnum Photo and Spheos in Paris. This is that taking place every year, starting every September. And what we want to do today with you is to introduce you to the program and then take you through the different activities that are taking place. And we're going to start with a short introduction about um, the program and the short video we did last year to that prevented the, the course and the exhibition that the student did at the end of the year. Ram, c'est que on a tous à cœur de former des photographes. super intense in one year we want them to be ready to work and find job and, and have a website and know how to present themselves and on top of that they have to make a personal work and they have to have an exhibition at the end working with an actual agency gives you so much real life context outside of the classroom not just like technical knowledge but also what to do with after we're done with the course how to market ourselves how to get our work out there the scope of the kind of professionals that you might encounter gives a really kind of full experience and sets the student up for kind of a professional life in photography. C'est des rencontres brutes avec des photographes qui sont des personnalités humaines, qui sont des personnalités au niveau de leur travail, qui ont une, une vision assez unique. You're getting decades worth of information and experience and knowledge handed to you in a, in a day from different people and like a wide range of photographers, everything from street photographers to really intense war photographers. Being able to see how they operate, how they think about photography, how they see pictures. And the whole idea of doing documentary in a creative way, I think some of the photographers that I've met during this course have taught me a lot. En fait, on ne s'apprend pas à faire des photos, on nous apprend à être photographe. I feel like my classmates have taught me so much. None of us have the same photos. Everyone's got a different perspective. And I think that's that's something that all of us, especially me, I, I learned from greatly from that. I feel like everybody in here comes like with this same notion of like we all come here like very open-minded. We don't judge like the other people. So we became like very close. I never would have thought that my photos would share the same space as Bruce Davidson, the guy who inspired, you know, my love for Magnum. It's been a ride. It's been a unique experience that I'll never see again. Ce qui, ce qui fait la force de ce type de Pierre-Yves, welcome and thank you for being with us today. You have to unmute yourself. On t'entend pas. Il faut que tu te, tu tournes, tu mettes ton micro. Ok, it works better now. Hello, um, yes, I will quickly introduce Pius. Um, we teach uh, for around uh, 40 years uh, in Paris. Uh, we have a network uh, which is today more than uh, 4,000 alumni. 
and um, tu peux changer. Merci. Um, and so um, the specific city of Spios is to um, uh, to help people to practice a lot. We have a lot of equipment. We have uh, professional teachers who uh, go back to a professional work after job after Spios. Uh, we have small uh, groups, um, so we have excellent um, uh, facilities, spaces. So it's a very good um, way uh, to learn photography. Um, <clears throat> so the, the program Magnum uh, we did create uh, 10 years ago is um, a specialized program in photojournalism. So everything is done from the first day to uh, create specialists of uh, photo uh, creative documentary photojournalism. So we know this program very well now after 10 years of practice and uh, we are very proud of it. Uh, it's a one year, uh, one year course in, in English, so you can start in September and uh, you end the uh, end of July. And uh, you spend two days in Magnum Agency, one day or two days with Magnum photographers, one day with uh, potentially uh, Spios uh, photographers. Uh, and so you really leave the agency two days per week, and then you are in Spios, uh, which is um, 200 meters from uh, Magnum. So it's very, very close, very convenient for the students to come from one place to the other. Uh, so in the first part, uh, we um, we teach you a lot of uh, techniques. So the goal is of the school is that really you have no more technical problems uh, when you leave. You are really able to light a situation to solve any kind of technical um, program um, technique. And um, uh, of course, we will teach you help you to build your business. Um, your business at the end of the school so we really give you the targets uh, how to go to how to sell your photos and um, uh, where to who, who to meet how how to do your website etc so the list of the classes is on the website so i let you re <laughs> read it but uh, fortunately, we have with us uh, the teacher of printing techniques, Philippe, who will speak very soon after me. Uh, but also, um, I invite you to read carefully our website, which is really very, very detailed. Uh, you, have, um, you have to read everything and you will know really the school before you come uh, to join us. And of course, you have a diploma, a double diploma, Magnum um, Spios. You will have two diplomas, one of Spios with uh, accreditation of the French government and another which is with um, Magnum Spios. Um, we all know that the diploma in photography is not the main thing, but you have one and the know-how. And we are easy to find if you search for Spios on the web it's quick to find us. We are the first, generally. Um, yes, to enroll spares, so you have everything that can be made online and uh, we will um, ask you sometimes some more information and then we will contact you by um, video conference. And so you can have discussions with Magnum people and Spios people um, as soon as we got the um, enrollment form full. And so you need, we need your CV, uh, motivation um, letter, of course, uh, and a portfolio, 10 to 15 images. Uh, of course, uh, we pretend to teach you photography, so you are not judged too much on your 10, 15 images. It's an indication for us, but don't panic because you don't feel good enough. So yes, um, I said it earlier, the program starts uh, mid-September and the end of the program is end of July. Uh, we have a very big exhibition uh, end of May uh, because after May, you work more on your business plan and other, and you meet a lot of people, but um, the photography know-how is already uh, ready in end of May. 
we don't have much holidays. We have two weeks um, in January and one week uh, in March. So we hope that you work a lot with us. Thank you, Thierry. Thanks a lot. Um, You're welcome. Thank you. So I'm the education director at Magnum Photos, and Sophia Abeche, who's also on this call, she's the Magnum coordinator, and she oversees all the SPEOS part of the program. She's there um, in Paris with all of the students. And we wanted to tell, tell you a little bit what happened on the Magnum side of the course. Like Thierry said, the two components are very, um, they're very complementary. You know, um, they go hands in hands together. Um, and it's been also six years that we're doing this program together. So, you know, we, we have a, a, a great um, experience of, of how this work for the, for the Magnum side, but also at Spears, I think what we think about when we work on this program is that we want to inspire students and give you the tools that are going to help you work as photographers afterward, both from the creative point of view and the business point of view. Um, at the Magnum side, we really focus on the storytelling aspect of photography, how you can tell stories using your images. And, um, and then for, for, to achieve this, we work closely with the staff at Magnum Photos, mainly on the first semester, and we also invite industry experts. But then it's also very led by the Magnum photographers themselves that come uh, regularly and, and work with the students throughout the year. Um, and Sophia can tell us a bit more about this, this site and this aspect of the teaching. We've, we've put some little videos of what happens on Thursdays. And these are like on the left side, you have an editing exercise. And then on the right side, it was Clara, one of our colleagues who works in the commercial department, explaining how Magnum works um, on the commercial side. So, um, hi everyone. As Sonia said, I'm the course coordinator um, in Paris. So, um, courses in the Magnum office take place every uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So, on Wednesdays, Leonardo. A sports teacher gives courses and on Thursday students meet with uh, Magnum photographers or professional, professionals sorry, from the photography field. Um, the first semester is mostly about shooting, being inspired, sequencing and editing ex exercises, brainstorming about your future personal project. And around December, students start working on their personal projects that will be exhibited around May, June in the Magnum Gallery and presented in the jury. So just so you have an idea, this year students have met so far uh, Richard Calvar, Strat Franklin, Thomas Dwarzak, Jérôme Cessini, Lua Ribera, Lua Ribera, sorry, and are currently with Henri Canage upstairs. So they met many other photographers, but they also met Nicolas Ossar from an NGO, which is named Action contre la faim in France. Um, depending on who they're spending the day with, students might work on assignments. So to give you an example, they met with William Kao, Kao two weeks in a row. He asked them to come with their camera. So on the first day in the morning, he gave them a presentation of his work, um, showed them images and talked about his own experience, how he decided to become a photographer, his first reportage as a young Magnum nominee. And when they came back from lunch, he gave them an assignment. So they had until um, the same night to go out and shoot on the team of Unseen. So I feel like it was a bit stressful for them um, at first, but then they, look it, uh, they took it sorry, as a training, which is a training, and they enjoyed the exercise. So some went to the cemetery uh, one took photographs of people hiding a part of their face. Others went to churches and some other followed um, the construction of building. So it was um, very fun to see how they managed uh, with the team and what was their reflection behind the pictures they took. This is what we're trying to do mostly with the Magnum courses, like inspire students and help them develop their personal photographic style. Thank you, Sophia. And so we've asked um, some of the Magnum photographers teaching on the course to 
tell us a little bit about the teaching practice. Um, the first person that you're going to hear from is Lorenzo Meloni, and we first ask him what, um, how did he come to photography? And we can't hear him. What's the need to start photography is basically curiosity. It's a curiosity to to the others and a curiosity about discovering myself as well. Uh, when I when I really started with the first project that I did, I started to photograph uh, my friends. Uh, and it was a moment of my life that I really wanted to, to, to move on and sort of change lives. So photography really helped me to, to look at my life under a different perspective and, uh, and, and question myself about what I was doing and how it was possible to sort of change. This curiosity is about the time and my life changed and I got curious to, to different things. So then like after a few years, like the Arab Spring started, I got curious and interested of like, what was the representation of the media of this, of these revolutions and then conflicts and the, uh, and I was really interested, like curious about this, um, these youths that they were about my same age, like uh, they, they wanted freedom, they were rebels, and they wanted to sort of uh, change the world. So photography for me is always like being a link and a tool to connect to the others, to, to investigate the relationship of myself with the others and questioning the, the representation of it. Speaking about an anecdote that uh, changed my way of working, I don't think I can really mention one. I think the work of photographer is really intertwined uh, with your life. I think like being a photographer before being a job is a choice of life. And so my life and my job, the, the, the room together and everything that sort of happened in, uh, in my life, it's uh, shape and change uh, my way of working. My favorite aspect about teaching is this dialogue and confrontation that is created with me and students and between the students themselves. It's, a, it's an interesting way to reflect all together about like uh, photography, representations. Uh, there are a lot of questions in photography that are not a yes or no, right and wrong answer. A lot of questions that I receive from the students, they are the same uh, when I started and this sort of, a lot of, sort of a lot of questions, they still sort of like obsess until today, my, my way of working and when I look at my work. So I think like one of the, one of the most important things as a photographer to, to grow and to learn is really to look at work and to look a lot of your work and question all the time your work. So even for myself, looking at a work of others and, and questioning, it tells me like to sort of Growth, so teaching is about is a moment of really of a collective growth, I think. But that's what I like about, about teaching. And me to start photography. Our next guest and speaker is Philippe Bachelier, who's one of the teachers um, at Spills. Um, and he's also, uh, and so he teaches all the print printing techniques is also the editor of the black sec black and white section of Réponse Photo, which is a French magazine. Bonjour, Philippe. Welcome. Il faut que tu te... Voilà. OK. Bonjour, Sonia. Bonjour. Uh, well, uh, so at the uh, Spéos, I teach uh, one of the several classes uh that form the program with magnum uh it's a uh, printing uh, techniques and it deals with all the aspect of uh, uh, preparing uh, your files uh, with uh, uh, in mind to produce a uh, prints next please okay so in, so today, the vast majority of images produced by professional photographers are viewed on a monitor. It can be a computer monitor or with a smartphone or a tablet. But the printed image remains an important part of the job because uh, it's a source of income 
Well, I would say it's also a source of joy. An image can be uh, printed in a book, in a newspaper, in a magazine, and it can be printed for clients, uh, exhibitions, galleries, and museums. This is why it's very important. And for instance, you can have a look uh, at the Magnum Photos Day uh, website with the Magnum edition, where you can find a, uh, several kinds of uh, prints. Next slide. And uh, in order to uh, produce uh, professional quality prints from digital files, we must uh, start with the uh, photographer's environment. And it means several things. Next slide. Uh, first, uh, well, uh, before you get what you expect to get on a print, uh, you must uh, understand uh, what is the color management for images. In fact, this color management deals uh, uh, for files that are meant to be uh, published uh, on uh, the web, on social medias, as well as uh, for printing. So, uh, we in, in the class, we start uh, by looking at monitor calibration with the luminance, white points, black points, and gamma. Uh, the monitor calibration is uh, viewed with the uh, school uh, monitors. Uh, the school is equipped with uh, uh, ASO uh, color edge monitors uh, that are state of the art in terms of monitor. And of course, since a lot of you come with your uh, laptop, uh, we'll see how to calibrate laptops. So we will see the uh, working color spaces in uh, Lightroom and Photoshop for raw files and other uh, formats. And we'll see the main uh, color spaces like Profoto, Adobe RGB, sRGB, and also the uh, color spaces suited for the web and social medias like sRGB or P3. Next slide, please. Well, uh, for as far as the uh, uh, printing is concerned, we'll see that uh, each printing system, uh, when I talk about printing system, I mean the combination of a printer and a paper, because if you take the same paper, but you change the printer, uh, you'll get another combination and so on. Uh, so each printing system has its own color space or color space that is called also gamut. And uh, we'll see that, for instance, inkjet printers have their own space, uh, hybrid imaging systems. Uh, those uh, systems, in fact, uh, mix the traditional uh, silver halide print uh, that is light sensitive. Uh, and it is used with machines like the Fujifilm Frontier or the Durst Lambda that expose uh, the uh, photographic paper uh with a laser beam transforming each pixel into a laser and we'll see also uh, the uh, concept of cmyk printing press cmyk printing press uh, are used to produce uh, magazines uh, newspapers books and so on next slide please say so we'll have to understand the uh, color management uh, and that each printing system is characterized by making use of ICC profiles. Uh, so for instance, ICC profiles, you might know about that. When I, uh, uh, you look at your camera, the menu of your camera, very often you will see sRGB, Adobe RGB, those are ICC profiles. But they are ICC profiles for shooting. Then you have ICC profiles for prints. Uh, so those ICC profiles uh, made for printers will allow you to soft proof your images in softwares like Lightroom or Photoshop. And it means that uh, you will see how your images will look like when they are printed. You will be able then to learn how to check colors that are included in your image, but you cannot print because they are beyond uh, the range of uh, uh, colors. And you'll see also uh, all the colors you can print with uh, fidelity. Of course, black and white images are not concerned by out of gamut colors. 
anyway, uh, the black and white uh, printing with ICC provide has its own language that uh, we, we, we see in depth uh, because a lot of photographers in the uh, uh, Magnum groups like to work in black and white. So we'll see how soft proofing help image editing in order to get a better fidelity between the image and its printed version. Next slide. Uh, we'll see the different printing system technologies and uh, we mainly focus on uh, something called RGB printers. Uh, in fact, the printers that are used to print directly from the file uh, coming from your camera and files that are edited, modified in softwares like Lightroom or Photoshop. And uh, those printers are the printers that are used for commercial prints as well as art prints. So it means today, inkjet printers technology, we'll see also the uh, hybrid imaging system uh, I've just talked about. We will see the uh, different types of paper used for commercial prints, art prints, exhibition prints. And we'll also talk about print permanence because after all, uh, when uh, you sell a, uh, a print, you plan to a exhibit prints, you expect them to last a, a, uh, uh, many years. Next slide, please. Then what uh, we will see uh, for this file, uh, those files are the uh, their preparation uh, so that you will know how to decide the uh, what's the image size, what is the uh, print size. Uh, we'll talk also about a, uh, the aspect of image resolution that is important for printing. We'll, uh, I'll explain uh, everything about the uh, PPI, meaning the uh, pixels per inch, DPI, dot per inch, the dots of ink, for instance, that are used by printers and how to master all that. Uh, to get prints with the uh, uh, details and the uh, sharpness you expect to get. Next slide. Uh, there's something else we'll see. Uh, it's uh, how to uh, uh, get prints from a professional lab. Uh, Spare has a partnership with uh, Picto, that is a famous lab in uh, Paris. Uh, you learn how to order prints with a professional efficiency. Uh, uh, about uh, Picto, in fact, the uh, uh, founder of Picto was a friend of uh, Magnum founding members, uh, Robert Capa, Henri cartier bresson uh, George Roger, or David Seymour. Uh, the lab is still run by the uh, Gassman family in Paris. And Picto uses a very efficient and sophisticated platform for ordering prints. And uh, once you know how to deal with a lab like Picto, in fact, you'll be able to deal with any pro lab on earth uh, because in fact, the lab relies uh, on a, a very efficient color management where uh, you can get access to different printing technologies, different kinds of uh, uh, printers, inkjet, uh, uh, hybrid printers, and you'll be able to download their corresponding ICC profiles so that you can soft proof your image and get uh, a, uh, a result uh, that you can easily uh, preview. Uh, it's in a certain sense as if you have a uh, distant printer plugged to your uh, computer. Uh, next part. We'll also see uh, how to uh, print directly at school. Uh, we have a, uh, uh, several Epson printers. Among them, the uh, Epson uh, SCP-P5000 or SCP-800. In fact, they are used to practice inkjet printing uh, and to understand 
how the uh, process of printing uh, is a uh, happens uh, and we'll see how to print directly from uh, Lightroom and uh, Photoshop so that uh, uh, once a, uh, you have set, for instance, the size of your print, uh, you'll be able to a, uh, adjust uh, the image size. You'll be able also to a, uh, check the image resolution, uh, see if it's uh, suitable or not. Uh, we'll see uh, how to set up the printer uh, driver, uh, how to set up the Printer resolution, when I talk about printer resolution, is, in fact, is uh, how many, for an inkjet printer, how many dots of ink are used to uh, uh, get uh, a very good photorealistic uh, effect. And uh, you learn how to use, uh, uh, of course, Epson papers, because the printers are made by Epson, but beside uh, the uh, uh, printer uh, manufacturer, you've got access to uh, many uh, other uh, manufacturers uh, that are famous, like uh, the uh, French company Console, in Console Infinity, and Hannah Muller, and other uh, uh, manufacturers. Next slide, please. Um, one important part when you work on a project is to work with uh, a uh, work prints. Uh, that's a, uh, I think that's very important because, um, well, uh, when you work uh, with a, a, a digital files, everything starts with a computer. Uh, you work uh, with a monitor, and if you compare the size of a monitor, even if you have a 27 or 32 inches monitor, it's a rather small space compared to a wall, a floor, or a table. So that when you make a large first editing of your images with a, uh, an application like Lightroom or, a sim, uh, or any similar application, uh, then I, uh, we suggest uh, that uh, you print uh, on small size prints. Uh, the uh, sizes that a lot of the professional photographers use are a, uh, uh, from a uh, 10 by 15 centimeters to about 13 by 18 uh, centimeters. And uh, then you, you will lay a print, maybe 50, 100, 200, 300 prints, and it will help you to a, uh, edit your work. Uh, what you learn uh, when I talk about, let's say 100, 200 prints is how to automate the preparation of files. Uh, and uh, what's important to keep a track of what you do uh, and to, to know a, uh, to what file a print corresponds, then you'll see how to automatically include your copyright, uh, your name, the file name, and all the uh, technical uh, data. Next. Uh, okay, so for just typically, uh, you have a uh, picture, then you can produce uh, all your prints this way so that uh, each time you pick up your, your prints, you know to what a uh, kind of, a, uh, what kind of file and having, for instance, some uh, data about the uh, uh, shooting uh, is also a, uh, uh, important for a, uh, several photographers uh, so that they can remember what they did and if they find that there is a, something wrong they can guess uh, why there is something wrong next uh, we'll see uh, how to prepare uh, exhibition quality prints uh, exhibition quality prints means um, finally uh, 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 in the uh, film era, uh, when the people were working with film, uh, in fact, they had to print, and it was the art of the printer to balance uh, the tones on, of an image. And, uh, and uh, this is what 
uh, we must do uh, with the uh, uh, pictures uh, that they uh, uh, are made with the UA camera, where you have a, to uh, change their brightness, contrast, color hue, and saturation. We will see how to decide to a, uh, modify uh, the uh, overall brightness or the local brightness, contrast, color hue, and uh, uh, saturation. In fact, we'll uh, also work on the visual uh, on the visual language, and we'll see how to uh, see an image on the monitor and how to a, uh, adjust an image so that when you get the image printed on paper, you still feel the uh, magic of what you see on uh, the monitor. Of course, a, uh, depending on photographers, uh, there are several ways to uh, uh, select papers uh, because some, for instance, some photographers uh, prefer the matte papers, a uh, prefer a uh, rather glossy papers, and all the types of paper. We'll see uh, the full range of the paper that are available uh, for printing uh, exhibition quality prints. Uh, and we'll see also how to uh, deal with a situation where um, you you may think that a uh, uh, your image may, uh, may not be as good as you think when they are printed large, and we'll see all the techniques that can help you to a, uh, a prepare files for very large prints, even if the resolution drops. So next slide. So for instance, typically, uh, here this is an image uh, that a, 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 in fact is meant to be uh, printed with a 200 centimeters, so two meters wide, uh, even if we see that the resolution drops beyond a, uh, what is usually recommended, that is very often 300 pixels per inch, we'll see how to manage all these situations uh, to still get very high quality prints, in fact, whether you work on small prints or very large prints. Next, uh, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Philippe. Thanks a lot. And I think this is this shows as well, um, for me, I was thinking one of the amazing thing with the course is like all of this knowledge that you get to have, technical knowledge that you get to have and receive from great professionals like you, which, if you don't have that, it will take you years as a photographer you know, to learn by yourself in different settings. So, thank you so much for this. Thank you. And before we play the next video, which is we ask uh, my film photographer Lua Rivera to tell us why it was important for her to take photography studies. She studied photography here in the UK. I also want to remind everyone that there will be time at the end uh, for questions. So you can you know, start putting your questions in the Q&A box and then we'll go through some of them at the very end. And so now Lua Rivera is going to tell us about her experience as a student. For me, the most important thing about studying photography it was the people I met whilst I was studying. So the circle of people that is interested on the same thing that later becomes, uh, turns into friendships. And there is a healthy competitiveness that I found in that process that keeps you very awake. And that was important for me. My favorite thing about teaching is when all, all together in a group, uh, you find solutions or ideas for someone that is working in something uh, for one of the students. And it's that process of sharing and being together, thinking about one body of work that is in the table. And I think there's something really special about finding, pushing the boundaries all together in how uh, a body of work can become one thing or the other in depending in, in different approaches in how you keep shooting and how 
uh, you edit it, how you think about it. I think that's very exciting moment. But uh, yeah, when all together, you work in something, you put all your energy together in the same work. It's hard to give advice because we all have different ways and different uh, paths. But uh, I maybe think to to trust in the process is important. It's very difficult. I don't know if I have learned that myself. But to trust in the process and to, for me, has been really important to trust my intuition and um, keep following what I thought instinctively was uh, important. And so now we welcome Karen Bizar. Karen Bizar is a photographer and she was uh, one of our SPEO students last year for the 2021-2022 cohort. Uh, welcome Karen, merci, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Sonia, thank you to invite me. Thank you, Pierre, also. Um, yes, um, hi everybody. Um, photography was for me a, a second life because uh, uh, before I was a criminal lawyer and uh, it was a big decision for me to stop uh, this career because it's a very intense career and uh, sometimes I, I wondered if I was not doing a mistake. But uh, joining Magnum and Spios uh, helped me realize it was really the good choice for me. And um, at school last year, a lot of uh, students was uh, young, uh, between 20, 35 years, but also some like me were more than 40. And uh, I really uh, encourage um, people who want to change and have a second uh, career to, to, to join this formation because uh, uh, it's, uh, it's really, uh, um, it's really nice to follow uh, this unique training to professionalize uh, your approach and develop your humanistic approach to documentary. And um, um, for me, um, uh, I started to do photography uh, with my kids and with street photography. And uh, I didn't uh, quit my job because uh, I was fed up with it. Uh, it's because uh, photography was uh, uh, taking more and more place in my life and uh, I wanted to uh, photograph everything and uh, um, today uh, after doing the school um, uh, it was such a, a great opportunity to have to, to get feedback from super photographer who helps you to forge your own voice and uh, I like the very important fact that uh, to become a photographer you need to have a purpose. Uh, so the program uh, is very busy, uh, but you take it uh, one step at a time and the uh, yearly timeline helps you to produce and challenge yourself. And uh, I really want to, to say that the two parts of the teaching are very different, but uh, complementary. And uh, with Peos, uh, we develop, uh, as Thierry uh, says and Philippe says also, uh, technique, studio, visual culture with a lot of uh, portfolio lecture. And uh, above all, we are given a lot of keys to, to know how to retouch, uh, retouch images, to archive them, to create prints, uh, to diffuse your work, to understand the market and to develop your network. So this is really, really interesting uh, when you are just uh, doing photography, not professionally, to uh, approach the, all these questions and to uh, think to um, become And with Magnum, the other part, of course, this is the enthusiasm every week to be at the agency and to be able to rub shoulders with its member and the staff, um, be really in the earth of the uh, so famous agency is really great. And uh, some photographer, as you said at the beginning, uh, uh, Sophia, are more invested in the follow-up uh, uh, of our end of year projects. Um, last year, I had the the great opportunity to work with Nana Eitman, Antoine Dagata, and Stuart Franklin. But of course, we share the progress of our work with more photographers from the agency. But we also have this great opportunity to have one-to-one uh, -one moments, and I really uh, enjoyed that. Um, so um, perhaps uh, I can start to draw some project. Yes, yes. 
So we want to show you uh, Karine's work as well uh, as a photographer. And so this is the project she's worked on last year and that she's going to walk us through. So yes, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, my, my former uh, past of uh, lawyer and criminal attorney uh, gave me a lot of uh, empathy, of course, and my, my, uh, my past feed, my, uh, my, my photography. And, and I decided for, for the school to, to tell the story uh, about uh, Dirk, uh, who was a repentant terrorist. Um, and um, his life is, is quite long to summarize, but just so you understand, uh, I, I will just present the, the, the background of the story. Um, Dirk was born uh, after uh, the trauma of the Shoah in Germany, and uh, his real name is uh, Hans Joachim Klein. And uh, he was part of the extreme left-wing terrorist movement in the 70s and, and 80s. Uh, you know, in, in, in France, we had the um, Action Direct in, in Italy, the Red Brigade, and uh, in Germany, it was Red Army Faction and the Banda Bader. And uh, at some point, this guy uh, became more radical and participated in a spectacular, spectacular sorry, um, hostage taking of uh, 70 people uh, on the OPEC, who was the, with the organization of petroleum exporting country in, in Vienna. And the commando was led by Carlos, an international uh, terrorist, and it became known later that the kidnapping of the ministers was planned by, by Gaddafi. Um, the background was the liberation of Palestine, and uh, it was much more important that uh, we, we saw it at the beginning. Three people were killed during the attack, and the uh, clan was uh, seriously um, injured. After that, he decided to leave terrorism with a letter to the newspaper Der, Der Spiegel, he denounced an attack and became very critical about violence and radicalization. And he gained the confidence of left-wing intellectuals who helped him on his escape to France, because for sure it was not easy to get, a, to get out of it. And after 20 years of run, uh, he was arrested, sentenced to nine years in Germany, pardoned, and uh, he returned to live in Normandy for 20 years again, but uh, this time not more on escape. And uh, finally free, he fell into alcoholism, depression. He went up, he relapsed. He failed to grasp uh, the few hands holding him out and uh, lives uh, a bit as an old recluse of society. And it was really this moment that interested me at first, this blank page where he was not longer a terrorist or repented, but just a man who was going to die. And, uh, uh, People often ask me uh, why uh, and how I came to photograph him. And I always reply that uh, his story has been calling me for a long time because I was uh, only 17 when I met him. And uh, he was going to play a role in my vocation as a criminal attorney because I, as young as I, as I uh, was uh, at this time, uh, I already understood that uh, a man always worth more than his actions. And um, I encourage also Everybody wants to tell a story to, to, to tell something very intimate because uh, I think every story is important to tell if, if really it comes from your heart and if, if it's important for you, uh, there is something to do, always something to do if, if you want to tell something. And um, I wanted uh, really with this series to uh, enter in uh, his personal space to the closest. But I was really afraid at the beginning he would, he would refuse because uh, he would find it uh, too intrusive. And he accepted immediately without any condition. I was very surprised, uh, even if I hadn't seen him for 25 years. He was just out of a coma and uh, he spoke very little, but uh, left me the key of his house so that I can take the pictures. Uh, I wanted to take a uh, uh, waiting, uh, he, he, he go out of the hospital. And 15 days later, he was back home and uh, gave me a call. So um, it permits, during the, during the, the time I, I did the first photo, he was not in the, in the house and uh, I, I, I could uh, um, think about the lights and uh, imagine uh, which picture I could do if he, if he were in the house. And I can try to, to make in my mind a kind of storyboard to imagine some, some scene or, or some moment of life uh, I could try to coach uh, when I will uh, see him again. So he was only, he, he was uh, already uh, 
75 years old when I started to photograph him. And I wanted to know uh, what was uh, redemption and regret. Uh, what is like to be alone, to be afraid, to grow old, to, to run, to resist, to fail, to love, to live like a shadow, to be arrested, to get drunk, to wait uh, for time to pass. And uh, for me, uh, the autumn of his life deserves to be told. And um, I felt like through my photographs, it is our humanity that I want to question, like I, I did it when I was a uh, attorney. And uh, uh, I did most of this picture uh, du during the school, of course, because it was a, a school project. So go going on weekend to Normandy, uh, because uh, Paris in Normandy is three hours. Uh, and uh, I remember, I think we had uh, around nine or 10 days during the, the school to focus on the project and we, we didn't have school at this time. It was quite tricky, challenging because we had some deadline for the jury, for the portfolio and for the exhibition in Magnum. So it was very exciting, but also very, very tricky. And I think uh, each year the, the, the students are a bit uh, <laughs> afraid by the, by the deadline. But at the end, uh, it works for, for everybody. And um, to, to, to create a, a melody in my series, I choose a sonnet of Shakespeare uh, about the hardness and emptiness of old age uh, compared to autumn, dusk, and uh, dying fire. And this element in the poem, uh, that's why I, I found it so be beautiful, um, have also the power to evoke a greater attachment towards the one who is about to disappear. And uh, in my images, I really, I really think about the light. Um, I have a, a story with uh, Stuart Franklin, who uh, I was doing a, a review of my images. And uh, he told me, OK, the, the subject is in front of you. Uh, the place uh, sounds amazing, even if you have a, a few uh, light inside. But uh, we have to find a solution for, the, for your shitty light. <laughs> So uh, it was for me um, a challenge because uh, it was, uh, it was uh, so right, it was so true. And uh, I go back to, to the house and, 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 uh, and think about a better light to, um, to really improve uh, uh, what I wanted to tell. And uh, I wanted the color and the light uh, magnify the distressing banality of this uh, daily life. And I wanted a, a kind of melancholy and sad sweetness. So uh, I had to think about uh, all that. It was not easy because uh, no natural light, the flash was too harsh. And uh, um, I tried to find a solution. Um, so this story is, is, uh, is really my point of view on this project. And uh, um, I think it's all I see him and all, all I want to tell him in the twilight of his life, but uh, it's not it's perhaps not the truth, I don't know, but this is my point of view and, and it's important to defend what you want to, to tell. And uh, after the school um, on November 9, 2022, uh, Dirk died uh, after having really relapsed into alcohol. And uh, I felt at this moment very empty and sad, uh, empty because uh, because the school was finished and after the school it's it's not the same energy you have to find an energy in, in you to 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 go uh, red and uh, and sad because I, I've lost my friend and uh, I was uh, with this work on my arms which uh, I was uh, sure I was not sure what to do with it and um, as I, I had the first prize of the jury in photo reportage with this work uh, at school at Speos um, I was also nominated in the Lake House Car Barnack Award with this series, and I also won the, the Jean and André Fage Prize in, in Bièvre, so that comfor comforted me in the idea I had managed to move people with this story, and uh, I had to continue the project. Um, and I sent Seri to different awards just to show it. And uh, one of the dotation of the Fash Prize is a personal exhibition in Paris at the Gallery Daguerre. So uh, from 1 to 11 March, I will exhibit 30 pictures. I, I, um, I want to say again, thank you to, to, to Pierre-Yves to, um, bring, to, to bring me to, the, to Bièvre to show my work because uh, it, it's today a huge opportunity for me to, to, to show my work. Um, 
But uh, the last thing I, I would like to tell, a um, few weeks before dying, Dirk gave me um, all his archives, uh, its entire folders containing press articles, letters, police and procedural documents, old photo lists, notes, and my project uh, uh, became uh, huge uh, because uh, uh, I, I became the recipient of his memory and I have the mission now to think uh, um, on the represent representation that uh, I will give uh, of it. Uh, and uh, I realized it uh, really, really few, few, uh, few months ago, ago that, um, that I have a duty. I have a duty of transmission and memory. And this is all the beauty also of the photography. Uh, at the beginning, I wanted to do that for the school, for his children and grandchildren he has not seen for years. And now I am uh, in the in the past to, to do it for us uh, because I realized I, I realized that, that the I realized sorry that the series um, is only today the starting point of a world uh, that opens up to me where I can be uh, a photographer I can be uh, again a lawyer an investigator an historian and a real a real storyteller uh, with the freedom to bring the to its uh, varied view, so of uh, different people who knew him, intellectual or politician or, or journalist, and uh, and uh, today uh, it's la it goes largely beyond the intimate portrait, and uh, and uh, and this is my my next step. Uh, I am uh, brainstorming for a book with uh, the help of a publisher, and uh, we will uh, find to a solution to to make an entry entry point with the series and to try to, 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 to put the personal story in a more universal story and, uh, and thinking about uh, something uh, more big, bigger. <laughs> I think I, I finished. <laughs> Thank you, it was so moving, like, like always. Um, I think maybe just I wanted to ask you to talk you know when we were preparing for this one of the things so for everyone here so this is a project that Karen developed when she was at school and and very powerful and it has um it also comes at the end she kept working and then now there's an exhibition there has been nominations for awards and and there's a discussion with the publisher so all extremely good news but i just wanted her to explain that this doesn't come without hard work um it's not like she's just been sitting in her apartment waiting for things to arrive she's worked a lot during the year at Pills and afterwards no of like really trying to make the most of any opportunities she had so do you want to tell us a little bit about the loneliness of being a photographer and how hard work pays it's important oh yeah yeah this is really really the tricky part of the job because uh, you you are your your first fan you are your first fan because if you don't believe in you nobody will so you had to, to keep always motivated. And uh, this is not easy because you are not, uh, for the moment, uh, I think the people who are watching us uh, are questioning themselves if, if, they, if they, 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 they start to, to, to be a photographer. But when you, you, when you really pass the, the time you, you become photographer, you have to always stay motivated and always, uh, uh, never forget to to work and to 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 meet people and to and to uh, imagine uh, something to do because uh, nobody will uh, will person va venir vous chercher. I am thinking it, um, searching my words. <laughs> no. find you. Yeah. So uh, of course, uh, um, I think after the school we are we are a, a bit alone because during the school we are really really. Uh, uh, pushed by uh, every people we meet, uh, the photographer, the people of the market, the um, every people push you and uh, and uh, to find your your voice, it's it's something really really uh, stimulating, uh, and you have deadlines, so you have things to 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 do. Uh, after the school, yes, you 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 feel alone a bit, but uh, the the goal is to 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 manage to to keep your network and. Uh, just um, speak with people and uh, share share with other photographers who are also in the same uh, in the same situation that than you. But uh, of course, 
doing some picture every 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 day every week is really really important to continue practice and um, also i wanted to to say that uh, i realized uh, after the school that uh, the space part is really really helpful when you are in the school uh, and you choose uh, the magnum program you are really excited by the by the alors for me it was the um, tuesday i see no thursday thursday at, at the agency and uh, each week it's it's so exciting to go and uh, you know you are so so proud to say uh, uh, to everybody you are you are following the magnum course and uh, it's 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 awesome of course but spells is also really great because uh, uh, i think to the claire course claire is a, is an amazing pro um, professor or teacher who who help us to diffuse and to to uh, organize your work also um, uh, having on your Chrome, for example, uh, every festival, every award, every every um, everything you you have to uh, think to 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 diffuse and to participate to to show your work. You have also a, a super course with uh, with Cedric uh, with Lightroom. So at, at, during the school, it's it's really busy. It's it's really a, a lot a lot of information. But after the school. Um, it's super nice to to see the progress you did in one year. So one part in Magnum, um, developing your voice and uh, and really uh, looking for your point of view on the world and uh, and uh, realize you have a, you have a responsibility with your picture and what you want to say. And uh, the other part with Peos, uh, more technical um, and uh, and the. The school learn to 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 try to live and make money also with with the school. Thank you, Karine. Thanks a lot. So, if everyone is in Paris between the first and the eleventh of March, please go to the to see her exhibition um, and find you'll find her on Instagram as well if you want to keep in touch. Uh, before we play the last short video where we ask Suresh Franklin, who has been a, a teacher and one of the main mentors on the course for many years now, um, we'll take questions afterwards so you can start putting them in the Q&A and we'll, we'll keep um, five, ten minutes for questions after this three minute video. Hi, I'm Stuart Franklin. Uh, I've been teaching uh, at Speos or with Speos for about six years and uh, I'm going to sort of talk about, you know, why is it important for students to come onto the Speos course with some knowledge of the history of photography? I think that any, any kind of engagement with the history of, 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 of art, of photography, of cinema, is incredibly useful. We are, in our world in photography, um, dealing with one particular visual language, but all of the languages uh, of art and the history of art is hugely important. How people dealt with color, how people dealt with composition, how people dealt with various subjects. And I think it's it, the more that you get to go and see galleries, go and see exhibitions, go and see how work is presented, how it's shown, how it's lit, how it's printed, um, how it's painted, if it's a painting, is, is hugely important. How colours are mixed, how colours are put with other colours, how drawings are, are produced. All of this stuff um, is hugely important in, um, you know, the formation of a documentary um, photographer. The uh, final question I want to address is, what is the one thing that you should kind of bring with you um, to begin studying photography at Spales. Well, I thought about this a little bit, and to be honest with you, I would say the most important thing you can do is dig into yourself. If you look at the history of photography, the most successful bodies of work are those works where somehow the photographer has drawn out of their his or her own kind of heart and soul, something that has meaning for them. So if you choose a subject, please try to choose a subject that is meaningful to you for one reason or another. Uh, it could be personal, it could be environmental, it could be all kinds of things, but the most important thing is that you can engage with it. And the more you engage with it, 
the more you will dedicate your time to it, dedicate your, you know, your spirit to getting it right. So that's the one advice I would have. Try and sort of find a subject that is meaningful for you. I hope that helps as a start to working with us uh, at Spaos. Well, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can see all of us and then we'll start um, to take. So there is some really good, nice comment on your work, Karen. Um, and maybe I can start with um, one question for you. Someone says, inspiring work, Karen, how are you finding work and keeping motivated after leaving the Magnum program? So you talked about this a little bit, but do you want to? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the, the, the chance I have is to have a a life before and uh, of course i am a lot inspired by uh, by uh, all my past and um, for the for, for example i i, uh, I am really interested in the, in in prison and uh, i i did a reportage in in prison and i i stopped my job after this reportage because i really realized that i wanted to plead in images and that uh, continue to, to, to tell story about men and women and uh, this kind of theater of life i was uh, I was every day, I wanted to, to continue with picture. And that's why at the beginning, I, I said very quickly, uh, photography was uh, uh, more and more important in my life. So I think my inspiration is also uh, what I, I, I am interested in. And I am interest, uh, in, interested in, uh, in humanity of people. I am in, interested in finding beauty in everybody. And, uh, and uh, my inspiration and my motivation uh, would be uh, in finding this kind of topics and this kind of story, we can be a really, um, uh, we can we can create a, an empathy uh, in in the in the viewer. So uh, at this time, I, I am trying to to find a um, solution to go back in prison and uh, make make picture about uh, women in prison in jail with their kids. Um, I have also. I have also defended so much cases, very, very passionate that, that I think I can, I can always uh, um, think about, uh, about things in parallel with that. Um, so yes, uh, keep, uh, keep motivating by uh, what you, you like, really. As said, uh, Stuart Franklin, something meaningful for you. And, uh, and that's it. Thank you. There's one question, maybe, um, Pierre, if you can, you can answer this one. Someone is asking, and maybe we will a bit confusing. Like someone is asking if it's only Wednesday and Thursday that we have classes, but actually it's every day, isn't it? You on mute, Pierre? Il faut que tu ouvres ton micro. Voilà. Non. <coughs> Uh, no, we have courses uh, quite every day. Sometimes every day, uh, day off, but it means you have more courses another day. And um, but anyway, the amount of courses is not uh, uh, not only that uh, you have to work a lot after the courses. So uh, it's a totally full time program, uh, weekends included. Yes, exactly. So it's um, it's. Um, I mean, this is also the beauty of the course. No, you come to Paris for one year and you end up with a group of people that you're going to live that year through with and, um, and work hard. Um, there is one question, maybe Philip, you can help us. Did someone asking about film photography, does it has its place in the course? Do, do, do students use film? You have to also unmute. No, on t'entend pas. Faut que tu allumes ton micro, Philip. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry. Uh, well, a few students uh, use film. The thing is, uh, uh, film photography is a uh, time consuming uh, because uh, after the uh, pictures I made with the camera, uh, you have to uh, bring them to a lab or uh, develop them by yourself then make the uh, uh, contact sheet uh, or ask them to be made by the uh, 
uh, the lab. Uh, if uh, you want to organize the files with a computer, you have to get them scanned. Say, so I think a, uh, even if uh, there are still some photographers using film for their production, they are organized in such a way that they uh, don't lose too much time uh, with all the technical aspect of uh, film development and prints from film. So this is why I, uh, we uh, recommend to work with a digital camera. Uh, it doesn't mean that film is inferior to a uh, digital uh, digital camera. It's just that uh, for a practical reasons, uh, I think it's a uh, more important to uh, uh, to work with a digital camera. In fact, uh, what you learn during this class is uh, how to uh, become a photographer. Then a, uh, how to view things as a photographer. I was very interested by the uh, uh, the, the video uh, and the, the words of by a uh, Stuart Franklin. He said that uh, getting a, a visual culture is very important. Then uh, uh, you adapt the tool. You adapt the tool. Say, if you're able to create uh, uh, a story uh, with a digital camera. If you're able to uh, 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 edit your images, uh, get prints, uh, in fact, then you can adapt this to film for the future. Uh, the most important uh, thing is uh, to, uh, uh, to build a story, uh, to organize your images, uh, well, to create a view on the world and what's around you. Uh, so this is why for, I would say, uh, uh, speed uh, and uh, uh, quality, uh, working with a digital camera is also better. And also uh, film cost a uh, money. Uh, so this is not a negligible aspect of a uh, film photography. Thank you, Philippe. Maybe one last question because I realize we, we're going over time. Um, but um, maybe someone is asking if for international students, we how does it work with the visa? So I know that Rios is assisting students with getting visa. Is that correct, Pierre? Yes. Um, so yeah, definitely we assist uh, people uh, wherever they come from to get the visa. Um, so uh, Anne-Marie, when you call at Spios, Anne-Marie is in charge of that aspect and will um, help you to get the visa. So most of the time we get the visas. Um, we do help you to have the carte de séjour and everything we need to stay in France one year. Okay. So we will send, following this, this uh, discussion, we, we will send um, um, follow-up email to all of you who have joined to, today with the contact detail, which are also implemented in the in the chat. So you have contact for Spills and the contact for Magnum. And we hear if you for anyone, if you have any other question by email, feel free to, to contact us by email. And we look forward to maybe meeting some of you next year in September in Paris. Thank you.